Okay, guys, um, we're moving to chapter six, and we're going to talk about clinical trials. So, a lot of stuff we already know. So, clinical trials, scientific study, right? So it's a study and a systematic, right? So, it means we have to have a, a method for doing it that's reproducible, right? Kind of like the scientific method. So, a couple of caveats that we already know. So, the control group's called a placebo. So, a placebo can... Uh, either be two things. It can be an, an active treatment, saline, right? just normal salt water, the concentration that a cell would be I'm um, used to, or it can be an active trial. And that uses another known treatment. All right. Okay, so there's two, two things here. So, at some point, the government said, well, it's not okay to, s to send a cancer patient who will probably die into a placebo group, the sham treatment, um, because it just it doesn't follow the code of ethics, right? Because we're knowingly doing harm to that patient. So in, in some sort of trials with life-threatening diseases, uh, they do an active trial. So they give the patient um, a normal type uh, of approved therapy and compare it against what we're trying to approve, right? So if this has a 30% effective rate, and we find that, oops, we find that our test group, our test group has a 60%. So then we can say, so that this is a 30% increase in effectiveness, All right? So we'll compare them like that. Blinding, right? So blinding um, is keeping somebody in the dark, making somebody uh, not know um, who's in which group. So double blinding um, is kind of the industry standard. So what this says is the patient So the patient and the researcher don't know who's in which group. So the patient doesn't know if they're in the clinical trial group or in their placebo group, and neither does the researcher. And that is to re remove bias. Right? If I knew my patient was in the placebo group, I may evaluate them differently, especially if, um, if there's a monetary incentive for me to have my drug do well. And then there's single blinding. Right, or only the patient doesn't know. So single blinding is not done to the extent, uh, just because it, it, again it, it puts bias in by the researcher. All right, so double blinding is kind of the standard um, for double blind study. So the science of clinical trials. So. Another way that they remove bias is they do randomization, right? So when we get people in for, so if we've got a thousand people in for phase two trials, um, we will have the computer generate who's on which list, right? And they'll put into a group. So a friend of mine does clinical research at UCLA and nobody knows who's patient in which group and he does brain studies. So he said they'll get the patient on the table under anesthesia. They'll open up an envelope, and the envelope will say placebo group. At that point, they'll make an incision. They'll sew the suture of the incision back up, and they'll just all sit, and they have to wait a, a period of time. All right, so during that period of time, they'll give the patient back the intensive care unit, and then the physician sees the suture, the physician sees a fake x-ray that shows that the skull was, was opened, and the patient doesn't know the patient thinks they had brain surgery. All right, so randomization. So they don't know who, who's in what group. The only people in that study who know are the people working in the surgical suite, but they don't do anything with the patient before 
they don't do anything with the patient after. Right. <clears throat> Clinical trials have produced many benefits, but only at the cost of many atrocities. So today you're going to look at those three cases, right? And we're going to discuss those at our follow-up Zoom. So you're going to look at those things that we do. All right, so just to remind you, phase one, we tested on a few people for safety and adverse effects. Um, these are non-therapeutic, so not sick. So in the case of the COVID vaccines, they're testing on college students. All right. Phase two, so these are sick patients. All right. So I got 300 to 1,000 patients in this sick group. Um, and now we're looking for effectiveness. Does it work? And we're looking for dosing, right? Dosing effectiveness, right? And then we're also assessing safety. Phase three, that's our large trial. So many phase threes are 1,000 to 3,000 patients. The current COVID phase three is 30,000 people. Right, so they're trying to get the data really quickly. Right, so now they're testing. This is people of all ages, all medical conditions. Um, and we're looking, this is sick and well people, and we're looking at the safest way to give the drug. Right, so especially if you didn't have it last year. Um, those three things. So ethical requirements for the this patient must give informed consent. So remember, we just talked about informed consent. Uh, there was those caveats to informed consent, all information, what to expect. We have coercion and alternatives. All right, so we have to give them informed consent. Um, and they have to be confident when we give it to them. The study must be designed to minim minimize risk to subjects, right? And offer a balance of risks and benefits. That's going to be there. They must be treated fairly, right? They have to have their privacy protected. It's that HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, right, of 1996. Um, so that says that um, that the the organization is doing the testing can't share the information uh, without the patient's written consent, right? And before research is conducted, it must be approved by the FDA. So we can't just start studies because we want to do them, right? It must be approved. And remember, before it's approved, they have to do cell studies. They have to do animal studies. Right? Um, their methodology has to be approved. The FDA comes out and looks at the research facility and everybody's credentials. So the FDA has to do, has to do all that. And then there's the case studies that we're going to talk about later. So anyway, uh, I'll talk to you soon, and have a good morning.